It was a hastily arranged news conference at the Pentagon. Following a meeting of the National Security Council, the Secretary of Defense announced the further deployment of U.S. forces to the Middle East. The intention, he said, to bolster the defense systems of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The president has approved the deployment of U.S. forces, which will be defensive in nature and primarily focused on air and missile defense. We will also work to accelerate the delivery of military equipment to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the UAE to enhance their ability to defend themselves. It's not clear how many troops the U.S. will provide, but the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff emphasized this was a defensive deployment and indicated the U.S. would ask its allies to offer their support. We're contributing to Saudi Arabia's defense. We would be looking, as the secretary said, for other international partners to also contribute to Saudi Arabia's defense. The Secretary of Defense continued to insist Iran was responsible for the attacks on Saudi oil installations last weekend, brushing off repeated Iranian denials of involvement, but at the same time confirming that the U.S. forensic team working with Saudi experts had still not concluded its investigation. News of the deployment closely followed President Trump's decision to impose new sanctions on Iran. Finally granted a visa, Iran's foreign minister took off for the U.S. Friday morning to attend this year's United Nations General Assembly, already underway at its headquarters in New York. As he flew, so did the tweets, responding to his American counterpart, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who during a visit to the Middle East a day earlier accused Iran of warmongering. It's not Iran that wishes to fight to the last American, rather it's his B-team hosts who seem to wish to fight Iran to the last American. B-team hosts a reference to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The line suggesting Saudi Arabia wants Americans to fight its war with Iran, that's in a direct quote from a secret 2010 State Department memo released by WikiLeaks. In it, former U.S. Secretary of State Robert Gates made critical comments about his country's Saudi allies not wanting to get their hands dirty. In diplomatic circles, no doubt a deep cut by Iran's foreign minister, using remarks by Pompeo's predecessor against him. Back in Tehran, a military advisor to the Supreme Leader left little doubt about Iran's conviction. If the Americans think of any plots, the Iranian nation will respond from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea and to the Indian Ocean. Americans should take what Hassan Nasrallah said seriously. Any movement against Iran will affect the whole region. No veiled threats here, invoking the name of the Hezbollah leader in Lebanon, a clear nod to a close ally and a reminder to would-be aggressors. Iran has backup. The latest war of words was sparked when Saudi and American officials said an attack on Saudi oil facilities claimed by Yemen's Houthi fighters was really Iran's handiwork. Iran's forceful denials and rebuke of U.S. and Saudi accusations is likely to dominate the conversation well into next week. That's when we're expecting Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, who was also just granted a visa, it seems, to speak at the U.N. in New York.